error detection. In the previous section on flow control, we assumed that the link never had any errors. So all the frames that were delivered to the receiver were correct. This is of course a, an assumption that we have to do away with. Think for instance of a 1 gigabit per second link. If the bit error probability is 10 to the minus 9, a very low probability, it still means that there will be one error on the average every second. So we have to deal with errors. The first issue is that we have to detect that errors have occurred and then we have to handle the errors. So why are there errors? Well, whole frames can be lost. If there are bit errors in the framing information already on the physical layer, the receiver will not properly detect the beginning and end of frames. So the whole frame or several frames can be lost. There could also be errors inside the frame. Single bit error is one where a single bit has been flipped. So a zero has become a one or a one has become a zero. But there could also be burst errors where whole sequences of bits are corrupted. This could be, for instance, when lightning strikes a, a link or on your Wi-Fi when you run the microwave oven to heat your tea. Even if a frame is delivered so that the beginning and the end of frame are clearly separable from the data, uh, the frame must be discarded. The question is why? The basic idea of error detection is to, to take the data as the string of bits and compute the function over the data. The result of that function will be appended to the data and data plus the result of the computation will be sent over to the receiver. The receiver can then compute the same function and compare the results, the included results, with the result that itself has computed to see if they agree. And if so, it will decide that the data has been correctly received. If they differ, then there is an error. We don't know where and how many errors there are, but the frame has not been correctly delivered and therefore it should be thrown away. There are various forms of added or redundant information for detecting errors. I will show the parity check, which is the simplest version, go through the cyclic redundancy check in some detail, and for completeness mention also what the checksum is, because it's used in some of the internet protocols. So the parity check simply takes the data and counts the number of ones in the data. If you have an even parity, it adds a 1 if the number of 1s in the data are odd, so that the total number in the data plus the redundancy becomes an even number. If you have an odd parity, well, then you should make sure that the number of 1s in the data plus the parity bit should become an odd number. It doesn't matter which you choose, even or odd parity. The only importance is that the sender and the receiver agrees which format is used. The receiver will take the, the data plus the redundancy and compute the same function. If there's even parity and they receive an even number of ones, then it decides that the data is correctly received. The advantage of using parity check is that it's very simple to compute. You simply take all the bits in the data and you take an exclusive OR operation between them. And the only redundancy that you add is one bit. Disadvantage, of course, is that it's a very weak check. If you would have two bit errors, then the, it wouldn't change the parity and you would not detect that. And only burst errors with odd number of bit errors would be detected. So the cyclic redundancy check is a more powerful uh, way of computing redundancy. And that is what is used in uh, most data link protocols. It assumes a given binary word, P, which is, we call a generator. It consists of n plus 1 bits and it has been computed in some way so it has certain properties. You take the data and then you create a message by the data and appending n zeros to the data for the message. So n is one bit less than the generator. And then you divide the message m by the generator p. And then you take the remainder of that computation. That remainder will have n bits those are the n bits that you append to the data as the extra information that will allow the receiver to check whether the message has been correctly received. So you send m prime and the receiver gets some message m biz, which might contain errors and in that case m biz will not be the same as m prime. 
The way that the CRC is created is such that the receiver can take m bis, which it has received, and divide it by p. If it gets a remainder of zero, then it knows that the data has been correctly received, can remove the redundancy, and it has the data to deliver to a higher protocol layer. Otherwise, there are bit errors or burst errors in the data, and the frame has to be discarded. So let me show you how to calculate using binary division. We have given generator 101, which means that the redundancy that we should add to the message should be two bits long. So we take first and add two zeros to the data to create the message M. The data is given here as 10011. Now we should compute the remainder of 101100 divided by the generator 101. Here subtraction is by exclusive OR uh, of the three bits. So the division proceeds as follows. If the first bit is a 1, then you subtract P from what you have and you put 1 in the quotient. If the first bit is 0, you subtract 0, 0 and put 0 in the quotient, but it's not important. the quotient is not important. And you copy down the next bit in both cases. So here we have 100, zero, zero, so it starts with a 1. So we get uh, 100 zero, zero minus or exclusive OR with 101. Zero, one. So the first bit disappears, we have hand dealt with that one, and then we have zero uh, exclusive OR 0, which will be 0, and zero exclusive OR 1, which will be 1. And we copy down the next bit. Now we have the first bit being 0. So we put a 0 in the quotient, and we subtract or take exclusive OR of 0, 1, 1 with 0, 0, 0. The first bit, again, has been used. So we have 1 exclusive OR 0 in two cases, which means 1 and 1. And we copy down another bit, so we have 1, 1, 1. Now the, the first bit is, uh, most significant bit is a 1, so we get 1, 1, 1 exclusive OR with 1, 0, 1. And we get now uh, 1, 0, 0. And we start to use this extra bit that we appended to the data. So 100 zero, zero, exclusive OR bitwise with 101 one gives us 010. Zero, zero. And we have copied down here uh, the last bit. And that exclusive OR with 000, zero, zero gives us a remainder of 10. And this remainder will be added to the data, and this will be the message sent to the receiver. So on the receiver side, it receives the message 1001110. Now uh, it wants to check whether it's been correctly received or not. So it takes the same generator 101 and it divides the incoming message with 101. And it checks not the quotient but the remainder. And if you follow through the computation here, you see that the remainder in this case is 0, 0 means that, that the message has been correctly received. If you would get the, a remainder which is different from zero in any one of the two bits, then you know that there has been an error. You cannot say what type of error it is, and therefore you have to discard the data. How do you find the generators? Well, they've been computed and are tabulated, and you can look them up. Many of them are standardized and are easy to be found but they're often written in a special form as polynomial. So rather than as a string of bits, uh, we can see the string of bits as being coefficients of a polynomial, where the exponent of the each term of the polynomial indicates the bit position. So, of course, as binary numbers are like decimal numbers, that the least significant bit is to the right, and the most significant bit or value is to the left. So if we, for instance, take the a generator 100111, then we can write that, starting from the right, as a coefficient 1, because that least significant bit is 1, and the position is the 0 position, so the term is x to the power of 0. Then we go one step to the left. We have, a, again, a coefficient of 1, because that bit value is 1. And the position is 1, so we have the term x to the power of 1. 
one step to the left, coefficient 1, the term is x to the power of 2. Moving to the left again, we have coefficient 0, and the term is x to the power of 3. Then we have coefficient 0 again for the term x to the power of 4. And finally, we have a coefficient of 1 for the term x to the power of 5. So you see here that the order of the polynomial is 1 less than the number of bits in the generator bit string. The polynomial can be simplified because uh, we don't have to write out the coefficient of 1 and all the terms with coefficient of 0 will disappear. So the polynomial for this bit generator will eventually become x to the power of 5 plus x to the power of 2 plus x plus 1. As I said, there are, there are polynomials being standardized. The I International Telecommunications Union has, for instance, standardized the 16-bit checksum with four terms, x to the power of 16, x to the power of 12, and x to the power of 5 plus 1. And you will always notice in these polynomials that they will always have the highest term and the lowest terms. And then there's a variant number of terms in between these two. So for the ITU32 CRC, you have the x to the power of 32 term, and you have the x to the power of 0 term, and then here you have several terms in between. And you don't need to memorize these, because you look them up if you need to use the CRC. So CRCs are very effective for error detection. They can detect burst errors in many cases, and they detect uh, single bit errors, even multiple single bit errors. They are simple to implement in hardware uh, as shift register circuits. And if you recall from the early lecture material on framing, you saw there was a trailer in the data link frame. And that trailer holds the redundancy that has been computed according to the cyclic redundancy check on the sender side. Checksums. This is an alternative mechanism. We treat the data as a sequence of integer number in binary format. Then you compute the sum of the integer number using one's complement arithmetic. And then you use the result for a detection. Checksums are less effective than CRCs, but they're easy to implement the software. This was important in the birth of computer networks when computers were slow. It's not important today, but at that time they standardized checksums rather than CRCs for several protocols like the Internet Protocol and uh, Transmission Control Protocol. So it has certain detection capabilities, but they're not very powerful. And therefore, if you would build a modern protocol or c communication system, you would base that on a CRC. So the previous methods were to detect whether there have been errors in the data, to so check the integrity of the data, that data that is being delivered at a data link receiver is correctly received. And you can trust the data, and that data can be given to a higher protocol layer. But there could be whole frames being lost. So how do you detect that? And we can do that by sequence numbers. So for the correctly received frames, where we have verified by a CRC that they're correctly received, we can include a protocol field, which is the number. And then we can simply see that the number should monotonically increase up to the highest number, and then it should wrap around. So if we have a sequence number of, of two bits, we would expect frame 0, frame 1, and frame 2, and frame 3, frame 0, frame 1, frame 2, and frame 3, and so forth. If we receive frame 0 and then frame 2, then we know that frame 1 has been lost. So this is very simple, and this should be related to the sending window that we used in the flow control, and which we will deal with also again when we correct for the errors that we have detected now by any of these methods.